the siege of Calais really gets hot, the German commandant requests a truce to evacuate civilians from the city. The CO Canadian troops agree, and under the watchful eye of our civil affairs personnel, 20,000 evacuees stream out of the stricken city. Although suffering from the terrible bombardment and from scarcity of food, many would not leave their homes. Members of the FFI, going in under safe conduct from the enemy, persuade them to leave. Calais truce is in effect. Elements of the 1st Canadian Army launch a left hook to Cap Grenade, small but powerful fort guarding the approach to the port. of Bomber Command renewed the attack on Calais by giving it more of the good old RCAF treatment. The prescription calls for 7,500 tons of high explosive in four days. It is filled and howled. Neither flesh, blood, concrete, nor steel can stand up to the bombardment from land and air. Canadian infantry muscle ever deeper into the maze of fortifications. Troops well trained in street fighting battle their way into the citadel which guards the dock system. The city which was the scene of the heroic rear guard action by a British rifle brigade in 1940 soon falls. A broken conquered city, a smoking tribute to the power of combined ops. In the attack, Jerry floods the approaches to the town. There's only one way through the watery maze. Canadians track it down and press home the attack along its path. Meanwhile, other Canadian units have smashed their way into Cap Grenay. A tough garrison of over 2,000 is overwhelmed. It surrenders together with its general. Eight cross-channel guns are blown up and captured. No more will the giants belch their senseless fury against the peaceful Kentish coast towns. Broken monuments to checkmated oppression. Their power is smashed by a greater force of free nations. On the road to Antwerp, Canadians move to liberate the city from enemy shelling. Plowing through the mud of Belgium, the objective is the Leopold Canal and the Scheldt Estuary, bounding an enemy base commanding the sea route into Antwerp Harbour. West of the harbor, our artillery is given the task of taking out a water tower used as an enemy O-pip. A 17-pounder responds with direct hits. Flamethrowers are given a workout preparatory to supporting the infantry in their attack across the Leopold Canal. They provide hot arguments against resistance. Near Eclu, Canadian tanks clear the way with their guns. Quick action of the White Army, Antwerp Harbour is captured in first class shape. Taking over the docks, the Belgians held them for three days. The Germans were thus unable to do any demolition work. So a great supply base is secured, which will soon shorten by many miles and many months the road to Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> 